Oh, wait, we are ready. Okay. Uh, they finished their game. They lost. They usually lose. So I'm going to hand this mic over to Pavel. Let's go ahead and give him a great big hand. He's going to talk with us about hardware wallet stuff. Yay. Okay, here you go. Okay, thank you, Diego. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, okay. It sounds uh, quite different here than there. Okay. Uh, okay, hi, I'm Pavel. I'm here to speak about Remix Wallet project, which we are working on. Uh, it's definitely not uh, only me working on that. There are more people, but uh, I will talk about it here. Okay, so what I would like to go through today is uh, there are four main points. Uh, one is... Uh, uh, how we are trying to keep the project going. Uh, then uh, there is the hardware messenger which we are trying to implement. There's also Monero wallet implementation we are trying to do. And uh, the last point is uh, hardware security of the project. So, uh, building hardware is challenging itself. Uh, I don't know how many of you ever tried to build something and uh, do it in an open source manner. And uh, it's not so easy to find the uh, contributors and developers who will like for free do that stuff and they do some commits which actually have a sense. So at the end you find out that there is uh, like a combination of, uh, of a depression and hard working uh, nights and it's, uh, it's not so easy always. Uh, we are a lot of thinking about the next steps because every time uh, Every time when you are working on something, you should know, you should have at least clear picture uh, of what is coming after, because otherwise there are people asking you what they should do and why, and uh, you must you must coordinate them somehow. It's very important to have some pol policy uh, policy how to avoid uh, burnouts because it's very obvious. And uh, the last thing is funding. Uh, uh, the best is, is uh, the best is if you don't uh, need the funding at all. But it's very hard uh, again with the hardware because actually you are burning the real world uh, resources. You are building a board, you are sold soldering stuff, ordering parts, and it's really expensive if you compare it to the uh, to the coding because coding coding is for free. Okay. So what we have here is uh, we have a device, and because we are trying to be very lean on a on a development, we are uh, building it in a couple of pieces. So it looks like that. It has alphanumeric keyboard, and uh, the first thing we uh, we were implementing on that is a hardware messenger, and uh, uh, it looks like that. You have uh, two devices. You plug them to USB and. Uh, you write down a message on one device. You write it down like uh, SMS. If you if you remember the old uh, Nokia style keyboards, so it's sort of like that. And uh, then you can send this message uh, over internet. We are using XMPP protocol because it's very easy to to uh, to work with. But we are open to another option. So if you think that you understand messengers and you think that we can use something different please tell us we can implement it later so right now we we are able to send a message from one device to another and it's uh, like uh, it's encrypted so it one it's uh, escape the the device is like binary blob and uh, nobody can read it okay uh, well, uh, implementing a Monero wallet. Uh, for those who don't, don't, don't know how Monero wallet concept works, so basically Monero uses two keys. I, I ho probably a lot of people you know about it, but just briefly, uh, you have a Monero blockchain, which is like a bunch of uh, data, and then you have a secret view key and secret spend key. And uh, those two keys are in a wallet. And what wallet does is that it, it just takes the key for a certain operation the wallet wants to do. So if you want to distinguish, for example, which output belongs to you, you are using a secret view key. And if you want to sign transaction, you are using a secret spend key. Or if you want to distinguish if the output is, uh, is spent, you are also using the secret spend key. Okay? Uh, so. So basically, if you want to implement Monero Wallet, you must uh, be sure about the way how we are using the secret view key and secret spend key. 
Uh, yeah, this is what I what I described. Okay, uh, at first, uh, the difference between uh, Bitcoin and Monero is that uh, in uh, in Bitcoin, uh, everything is in plain text, but uh, the the Monero uses a blockchain where everything is encrypted. So, uh, if you are doing a scanning, if you want to distinguish how many outputs are there, are yours and the balances and all the stuff. Uh, you must do a lot of uh, cryptographical operations. You just uh, basically take a piece of data, then you, then you unlock it with some uh, cryptographical magic, and then you see if it's yours or it's not yours, and then you go, go more into that. And this is really like resources hungry. It needs a lot of computational power. So that's why uh, uh, usual approach in, the, in, 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 the, in this like, cryptocurrency field of a different uh, manufacturer, manufacturers of hardware wallets is they they choose a public scanning to uh, to do a Monero scanning uh, of blockchain. Uh, if they are doing a public scanning, that means that they offload this uh, view key to the host, and uh, this part of the scanning is done on your PC, and then. When you distinguish which output is yours, then uh, at that point uh, the private key comes into play and starts to do that uh, unmasking and uh, uh, more more operation on that. And this is this is the point where we think uh, that we are a little bit wasting the the beauty of the Monero protocol because it was it was designed in a private way and by leaking out the view key you are basically like crippling it a little bit. So, so this is why we wanted to do a hardware wallet which is doing a private scanning. The problem is that with private, uh, with the hardware wallet, you want to use like a dump processor, which is uh, simple to program and uh, doesn't have a to too much, uh, too much anything more than you need. And at the same time, you need uh, you need a lot of computational power for that. That's why we, we are working with um, this microchip, microchip CC1702 because it's basically Cortex-M4F with a block which is uh, uh, used for hardware accelerating uh, like uh, the certain functions which we are using in the code. So we are trying to re-implement the whole Monero scanning and whole stuff and uh, we are using these certain accelerated functions to to make it faster also on this dump processor, okay? So uh, those numbers are uh, what we estimate could be feasible. We have a working uh, a wallet right now, but uh, it's a little bit slower than that, but there is a lot of room for, uh, for, uh, um, for improvement. So I believe we can get close to this, okay? There's a big question also, because right now we have maybe seven transactions in a block on the Monero mainnet. It could be enough now for our project, but in the future when there is a more transactions, uh, there is uh, probably more need to do something faster. Okay, but uh, this is what we have now. Uh, and uh, if I uh, want to speak a little bit about hardware security of uh, the thing which we are uh, using, like of the CEC1702, it has a secure boot feature, it's booting only signed images. Uh, okay, it's vulnerable, of course, to some fault injection and glitches as uh, every kind of these uh, Cortex M4 processors. You can avoid, uh, you can avoid uh, the security problems with using a passphrase. Uh, you can uh, have your own source of random, which we also have on the board. Uh, we have our uh, own uh, true random number generator, and also we are using a couple of secure elements to combine the random to make a seed. So there are some, some ways how we would like to improve it, but basically, uh, basically uh, we know about this, uh, uh, the, the possibilities of attacks, uh, which uh, people usually do on Cortex M4. But we want to we want to avoid that by uh, by using secure elements and uh, own source of random. Okay, now I would like to speak a little bit about the project itself because we are so we are so lean in uh, terms of management that sometimes I'm not sure if we even exist. But uh, we are working one and a half year on that, and we have like 
five prototypes and the last prototype is, uh, I would say, quite working. And uh, we would like to continue more with work on that. And in case we find out that uh, it's not enough in the terms of speed or computational power, we will probably uh, switch to FPGA or maybe we will do some experiments with Risk Five in a short uh, term future, who knows? But right now we would like to use that uh, microchip because it has uh, enough computational power and if it's not enough, we will just improve with something faster. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's all. If you have some questions. No questions? Ah, it's time for Diego. Thank you so much, Pavel. Let's give him a second round of applause. Okay, stop. Let's give him a third round of applause. And that's all you get. So uh, thank you so much, Pavel. We're going to go ahead and send him off the stage.